Hello, welcome to our classical music improvisation channel. I'm Robert and this is James. Tomorrow we are starting our Pajo Bell challenge and we're very excited about it. 14 days of learning step by step to improvise on Pajo Bell's canon. We will start with zero experience on the note D and end up being able to improvise on eight chords. In other words, the entirety of Pajo Bell's canon. In this video I will introduce our concept for this challenge and give a little history of Pachelbel the composer and Pachelbel's canon. We love sharing our videos with you online, so don't forget to subscribe and if you can help us to continue making videos, please do so by supporting us on Patreon, where there is also always more material to be found and where you can send us your improvisations however small and simple, so we can help you move forward with personal advice. We try to emulate one of the ways classical musicians learned to improvise in the past. They learned by doing from lesson one. Uh, they were copying and emulating more experienced players alongside them, sometimes their masters, sometimes their peers. So each video will have an element of repetition from previous videos some playful ear training, an introduction of new material and finally there will be a little jam session where everything comes together and you can play along. And that's in fact the most important thing, just play along. Don't think about it too much because the important thing is that you are improvising a little bit every day. That's, that's one of our main goals with this challenge. You don't need any experience with improvisation, anyone can join. However, you know, we are just aiming it at, cert at a certain level, so feel free to repeat videos if you feel we're going too quickly for you. If you are making mistakes or finding it difficult, that's a good sign. It means you are learning, you're stretching yourself. So embrace that feeling or just do it again. For piano and bass instrument players, for now just join in with the melodic improvisations. Chords and basses will come along the way. Please let us know in the comments what helped you, what didn't, what you want to learn next, what you still need. If anything is unclear, we are very happy to talk to you about all of this. We're also trying out this new thing. You can keep track of your progress on our worksheets. Give yourself stars uh, so you feel like you're progressing, but also so you know, oh, my listening skills, I could still work on a bit. And in this way, you're really making a challenge out of it for yourself. So let's see if you can keep it up every day. So a bit of history about Pachelbel. He was born in 1653 in German Nuremberg. Although he traveled widely in German-speaking countries, he died in the same Nuremberg in 1706. Like the Bach family, his children and a grandchild also were musicians. And the latter even made it to America and was possibly important in bringing European Western classical music to those shores. Although people make scathing remarks about our Pachelbel now, because of having heard or played his canon too often, he is actually recognized as a leading composer in church and chamber music in his time. You can read up on his life in more detail on the internet, so I wanted to shine light on a few things I thought were interesting specifically from the point of view of improvisation. One of these things is a contract we still have for his employment as an organist at Erfurt in 1678. In it, uh, among other details, we can read about the duties of the organist. He had to play a prelude before the congregation would sing. Well, this is normal. But interestingly, the wording apparently makes it clear that this was not supposed to be improvised, but prepared beforehand. You never improvise without preparation, just like we're trying to help you prepare here in 14 days for Pachelbel's canon. So perhaps that's what's meant. Don't just uh, show up for the gig and improvise. Also, each year on his employment anniversary, he didn't get a day off, but he had to do a sort of exam, a re-examination to check his progress, playing a half-hour recital showing his best new sights. So how would we examinate ourselves if we set ourselves such a task every year? I thought that was a very interesting and inspiring thing to think about. Another interesting factoid is that he was close to the Bachs during his years in Thuringia. 
Johann Sebastian's father, Ambrosius, asked him to be godfather to his daughter and to teach Johann Christoph Bach, who would later become our Johann Sebastian Bach's teacher. So there's a fascinating lineage of teaching there. The so-called Weimar tablature is also interesting. In it, chorale melodies are harmonized and introductions are written out. It has a clear pedagogical goal, teaching the organist the art of harmonization and improvisation. And perhaps we will do a video about that some other time. Let us know if you would like that. Historically, Pachelbel was also significant, not only as a teacher of important composers in the next generation and the earlier mentioned um, Johann Christoph Bach, who became Johann Sebastian's teacher, but he was also one of the first 17th century composers to have become of interest again in the 19th century. So lots of Baroque composers were kind of forgotten. But already in 1839, Franz Kommer published much of his organ music. In 1873, Philip Spitta talks about him in his Bach biography, dealing in detail with his works as an important part of a trajectory towards Bach's music. Then, additions and honorary mentions kept being made, and every decade more studies and publications of his music appeared. Similarly, for the now famous canon, our earliest surviving copy is actually not from Pachelbel's time, but a manuscript from the 19th century, perhaps as much as 200 years after it was written. We don't know why Pachelbel wrote it or for whom, and it could even have just sat in a drawer for years without ever having been performed. How crazy is that? And by the way, drawers did exist then. They became popular in the mid-17th century. The canon was first published in print in 1919 by Gustav Beckmann in his article on Pachelbel's chamber music. In 1940 it was first recorded. To hear the oldest few recordings of this piece, you can click on this playlist. The recording that made this piece famous was done in 1968 by the Jean-Francois Bayard Chamber Orchestra. It is this recording that set the tone for the slightly slower wedding version and also had extra parts written in by Payard, something that was still relatively normal in that time, and they, those parts, are still in use by modern orchestras today. Pachelbel's canon is quite a special piece. As you know, the first two bars, the first eight chords, keep repeating themselves. They are the ostinato, the ground. After two bars, a melody starts in the first violin, and this melody is repeated exactly after two more bars by the second violin, and then after two more bars also by the third violin. Now you might think, wow, you only had to compose one melody then. But actually it takes quite some skill to make a melody that is both a nice melody and also works whilst the two other parts keep repeating um, the same melody a bit later. The idea is not revolutionary, especially English composers in the 16th century liked adding intricate counterpoint and canons above a ground like this. But nevertheless, I don't know of other instances of three voices in total unison canon and rigidly staying in canon over the entire piece over one ground. The scholar Charles E. Brewer suggests that Pachelbel's canon may have been composed in response to a chaconne by Franz Ignaz Bieber, which also has similar canonic elements and indeed a similar bass. Well, however, that's only for two violins and it is also a bit different. But we're very curious to know what you think. Have a listen here and let us know in the comments below whether you think it's very similar or not. Let's talk a bit about the harmonic progression, so the way the chords are organized. Bieber uses a similar progression, and that does not come out of nowhere. Like in language, certain chords are likely to be connected with other chords, as certain words are likely to follow other words. Pachelbel's canon's harmonic progression was used and still is used a lot today. It was known under the name Romanesca, already coined in the 16th century and often used for ostinato compositions and improvisations in the 17th century. And as always, if you want to know more about that, let us know in the comments and we'll do a video about it. 
Also in Partimento, something I talk about in another video, it was one of the basic building blocks of music which students were taught. Hopefully you enjoyed this little voyage into Pachelbel's and his canon's history. See you in the next 14 days for our challenge. We can't wait to improvise with you and see how far you get.